Hi, <clears throat> it's Ross Patterson here. Um, I'm going to start a new series, just a brief five minutes, um, more or less. I'll, I'll try and keep to the five minutes. It certainly won't be shorter. Uh, during this particular time when probably many of us have got more time than we normally have. And uh, I'm going to post them on our Facebook page, which is um, www.facebook.com backslash Field Partner International. Field Partner International, all one word. What I want to do is talk about uh, mission. That's the Great Commission. And I want to talk about one particular man to begin with, a guy called J.O. Fraser. J.O. Fraser was, uh, well, let, let me go back to the Bible a little bit. Um, at the end of Matthew's Gospel, you will know that Jesus said, go into all the world and make of all men my disciples. So when he said that, and a phrase or two after that, full stop, end of book. So obviously, if you say something like that at the end, cross-cultural mission, reaching different nations with the gospel is important. You'll know in Acts 1.8, the disciples said, hey, when are you going to bless us? When are you going to do great work in our place, Israel? And of course, there's a special place for Israel, but that's Jesus said, it's not for you to know the times, but this is what I do want you to know. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So the last thing Jesus said before he was taken into heaven, the end of the book in Matthew before he ascends into heaven, is the ends of the earth. All right, now, I don't want to talk of the philosophy or even the biblical um, position on missions. We've done that a lot. If you go to fieldpartner.org, you'll find some materials on that uh, in English and Chinese. I won't give you the Chinese address because if you listen to this, you probably don't speak Chinese. What I want to do is, is talk to you about one man, a guy called J.O. Fraser. J.O. Fraser um, is not well known even amongst those who know something about missionaries. Many of you, I'd be interested to know actually, do you know who Hudson Taylor is? Do you know who William Carey is? Do you know who uh, Livingston is? Uh, probably some of you listening at least will know the answer to those questions. You probably don't know about J.O. Fraser. There's a big kind of student mission thing in the States. Um, and amongst the, the the missionaries they list, they don't list Fraser. Um, YWAM, great organization, has produced, or when I last heard, a, a series of heroes of the faith, doesn't list J.O. Fraser. You say, why should they? Uh, it's not amongst, um, as I say, uh, the 21 missionaries you should know, and so on. Why should you know about him? Because he went to work with a people group in China, in, in southwest China, about 100 years ago. When he went, there was not a single believer, nor a single Christian amongst that people, a group called the Lisu people. By the time he'd finished, and I got to uh, look at my notes to be accurate of this, when he went, there were none. By two, 1918, which is the end of what I'm going to talk about, this really critical seven years of missionary work that he did, during which much of the time he saw nothing, by 1918, there were 600 believers or 100 families. By... Uh, 2008, there were over a million Lisu Christians, Lisu the people he went to, there were over a million Lisu believers in Yunnan province, southwest China, where they live, and in Burma. So something this guy did, if you believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, if you believe that we're called to reach out where the gospel is not known, and to see folk have the opportunity to come to Jesus, if you believe that, then this guy did something very, very right. Even if we don't know about him, we should know about him. And I have found, I'm going to throw up 
uh, some materials on the, the Field Partner Facebook site. Um, I'll give you that again at the end. Uh, relating to him, I, I believe his story is not just inspirational. Uh, inspirational is good, but it is radically challenging to two kinds of people. Number one kind of people is we work in a local church and we have some rather strange people who go out and do missionary work, but it's really nothing to do with us. I want to speak to you about it is because a key factor we're going to see in future episodes of his success was the church that stood behind him. Number two, I want to speak to some of you who, like him, didn't consider mission until God zoomed into his life. He was training to be an engineer uh, in London University about 100 years ago. He was a near concert level pianist. And God stepped into his life and said, this is not what I want you to do. I want you to be in southwest China, reaching a people who'd never heard the gospel. Now, a hundred years later, which J.O. Fraser would you like to know? The concert pianist? There are lots of them. The engineer? There are millions of them, I imagine. Or the guy who took the gospel to an unreached people and saw pro rata then become the highest number of Christian believers of any people group in China. Okay, um, I'm going to post this on YouTube, obviously, but you'll find it uh, and succeeding ones on www.facebook.com backslash Field Partner International. That's our uh, Facebook site, uh, our Facebook site. And also, by the way, I put up a daily, very brief devotional following uh, Scripture Union Encounter with God notes. Uh, you might like to have a look at that too. Tell your friends about it. See you next time. Thanks.